All right, just wrapped up uh, our Thursday practice in the stadium. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, guys are uh, anticipating a, a great matchup between Notre Dame and USC. And there's a lot of anticipation and excitement. Uh, you know, again, for us, we'll have to prepare very well against a team that um, we have a, obviously a great deal of respect for their speed on offense, um, you know, what uh, what they can do, their versatility on defense. So um, it's been a good week, good week of preparation. Our guys are focused. Um, and uh, again, look forward to uh, the challenge that we'll have on Saturday night. Questions? Is there an update on the status of Quentin Nelson? Yeah, he um, he practiced this week. Uh, he he got some first team reps, um, and then we'll we'll decide. You know, probably Saturday game time decision on it, whether it's Bars or Nelson starting a guard. I know a couple of weeks ago you talked about how you're looking for a role for Winbush, um, that just kind of beyond mop up role. Is that something that you've kind of figured out at this point? We're, we're yeah, I think we're in a position now where we're um, confident that we can put him in the game at any time. It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, at the end of the game mop-up duty, um, or we're forced to play him. Um, so I think we, we've had enough time with him and developing to the point where we believe we could play him if we feel like uh, there's a spot in the game that, that um, can increase our opportunity for success on offense. So um, stay tuned. Brian, are you at the point now where you're going. You're either going to redshirt somebody or not. In terms of not only the freshmen, but guys like Justin Brent, Jay Hayes, uh, guys like that, are, are still open to that beyond this year. I think if we were sitting down, um, you know, having a uh, a bite to eat, we would have that conversation um, off the record uh, about players. Um, you know, because. For me to publicly talk about a specific kid, I don't want to take their competitive spirit away from week to week, but I could tell you that I formulated in my mind those guys that we want to protect. Um, but you can never, you can never say I'm not going to play him um, regardless of the circumstances because if injuries show themselves, we've got to be ready. So. What I like to do is prepare them without having the conversation that, hey, look, um, you're in the two deep. We're going to take you to all the games. We're, we're going to give you significant reps, but I don't think we're going to play you. I don't have those kinds of conversations. I have them to myself. I'd have them to somebody off the record, uh, but publicly I, I wouldn't have those type of conversations with the, the individual. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. One kid that I'm curious about, you know, it just, you have so many good linebackers this year, but he was injured in fall camp. Josh Barajas, how has he practiced? He is coming along. Uh, you know, he had, he had a couple of injuries coming in, um, and he, he, he put, you know, sometimes kids have a perception of what they need to be when they come in, and he put on a lot of weight, <laughs> and he had put on too much weight. Um, and so we had to get him back into our weight training uh, program and, and our nutrition program. And we've, we've got him back to where we see him um, in terms of size and weight and really like where he is right now. So I would tell you that within the last probably week or so, he's beginning to catch our eye as to what we saw from him last year. He just came in a little bit bigger than, than we had scheduled him for a particular position. Brian, if you were a coach going into this game and you just lost your starting center and you have to play with a young center, what would some of the concerns on your mind be? Well, first of all, who's, you know, what kind of responsibilities does he have? Is it, is the, you have a veteran quarterback in, in Cody Kessler, so that, that would alleviate a lot of my concerns because he can set the, the calls. He can identify the mic. He can slide the protections. He can do all those things. I'm sure Max had a lot of that on his plate, where Cody can pick up for a lot of those. 
they're going on the road so they can go nonverbal in their cadence. That would be another thing. You know, if you go verbal cadence, does he hear it? Does he not hear it? If you just go with visual hand signal cadence, you're eliminating those kinds of concerns. Um, I, as long as he's a competent long snapper of the football and, and you feel good with the, that, the mechanics of it, um, you know, he's a veteran offensive lineman. So he's going to know the schemes. He's a, he's a good blocker. Those would be my biggest concerns. As long as those have been addressed, which I'm sure they have with a veteran quarterback, I probably wouldn't be as concerned. I know you only concern yourself with things that you yeah. control. Um, so this is a follow-up question no, on it's USC? Really <laughs> Temperatures in the upper 30s, lower 30s, yeah. is that a bonus intangible? Yeah, yeah, it's better. Look, 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 we had it the other way, Tim, last year. You know, it, it was, you know, 89 degrees in the shade when we played at Arizona State. So um, we're, we're, we're just fine. It, if it dips to 38, that'd be okay too. Third two, he's, a, he's the guy that Deshaun Kaiser. Yeah. He's well, um, you know, he's a big kid. You know, he's 235 pounds, and you know, certainly, the nature of of the run game is one where you're trying to spread out the box. You're trying to gain, you know, favorable numbers, and and with some of our jet sweep package, you know, we can gain some favorable numbers if we run the quarterback. We want to be judicious with it. We want to be smart with it. I think, I think we still have to be very careful when we run them. Um, I think it makes sense to pick our spots when we do run them. But he's a big kid, and, and you know, he should be able to get a couple yards for us. remember just how big he is sometimes and not think of myself as, hey, I'm just a pro style quarterback back here? Um, he's not, um, you know, it's interesting. You know, he's a kid that is so conscious and aware of everything around him. Um, I, I, and I was the one that brought it up to him um, that, you know, he had lost his feet on a quarterback sneak. Um, which is something you just can't do. You've got to keep your feet moving. He's such a big kid, and, and I had commented to him, you're a big kid, you've got to keep your feet moving, you've got, you got to keep doing these things. So I think he's, he's got the ability to be the kind of runner we need in those kind of short yardage situations, but he's not accustomed to it yet. I think we've got to keep working with him, and I think he'll be fine. Yeah, we'll have Tim Brown and uh, Jerome Bettis speak to our team tomorrow, um, which we're pretty excited about. Um, and th th this this is a this is a week where we hear from a lot uh, of of people. The coaches never call in, you know. Coaches are superstitious about that. Uh, Coach part season would be the last one to even think about doing something like that. Um, and Coach Holtz is is always available if you call him. But uh, players. Players are more available and around during these kinds of games. You mentioned early in the week about the pep rally with Jared Grace, and you said, boy, he's more than special teams player. Did, did his performance last week kind of uplift maybe his chances of playing a little bit more, or is it just certain teams are matchups for him and certain teams are? I think certain teams are better matchups for him in terms of when he can, you know, really impact the game. Uh, but I, I, think, I think he helped himself with, with not only, um, he, I knew what he was capable of, I, I think it helped in, in Coach Van Gorder's eyes too, you know, because he hadn't seen him really uh, play. Um, I had, and I know what he's capable of. I recruited him. So um, I just think, you know, from Jared's perspective, it was nice that he had, you know, 17 production points on, you know, 19 plays, and I think it just helped him personally, and I think it, it added some credibility to what he could do to our defense. In a mere situation is so rare, you haven't had a lot of scholarships to scholarship transfers. USC or Archer, I know. I know that his dad was moving to Purdue and yeah. he wanted to be close, but 
what, can you kind of take us through the r real early stages of that and kind of you? Well, we, we looked at him. Amir was interested in Notre Dame coming out of high school. And, and so there was a connection with Amir really liked Notre Dame coming out of high school. He liked the academic environment. Um, and so th th there was that connection. And then, of course, when his dad got the job at Purdue, there was the, the geographical connection as well. Um, and, and it just didn't appear to be the right fit for him in the first year. And, and so when he contacted us, we were looking for a slot receiver. So it just seemed to be a good fit for us, and it has been a very good fit for us. Brian, you mentioned Dory Jackson on Tuesday. Just, yeah. you know, when it, you do have to game plan for a guy like that that can be on the field 100 snaps, how much do you have to watch all the film on him and see where the different areas he can kind of affect? Well, his impact, you know, is for me, there, there are certain areas where you really have to game plan for him. Uh, we, we, know, we know why he's in the game offensively, right? He's either going to be featured or, or he is a, a decoy. It's, it's one or the other. Um, you know, he's not in there the block. Um, so we know, we know the offensive fit. You know, defensively, he's one of their corners. You know, he's got great makeup speed and, um, you know, certainly a guy that is a cover corner. You know, he's not a, a guy that's going to be rolled up and, you know, look to uh, tackle and, uh, he, but he's a cover guy. So we know his makeup in those two areas. It's the special teams where he changes the game, you know, considerably changes the game with his kickoff return and punt return ability. So you have to game plan him there more so than in then the other two areas. He's an outstanding player as an offensive player and as a defensive corner, don't get me wrong, but you really have to game plan him in ST. And then you, you touched on the weather a little bit, but how much does it help you guys that you've kind of focused more on the run this year for a game like this where, you know, it might be better to keep it on the ground? Oh, I, I don't, you know, we threw the ball, you know, if we catch the ball against Clemson in the pouring rain, we could throw it. And, and the only thing that really affects conditions is uh, the kicking game is affected with wind. Other than that, we can throw it in any conditions. Um, so, you know, regardless of what the situation is, we're prepared for anything. Skyrocketing. Wish I had him another couple of years. He's really coming into his own. Really proud of him. Was that, did you have to press him for that, or was that something where he reached a point where you realized? You know, some, some guys, it just takes longer to, to get to that point, you know? Um, you know, he was still cooking, you know? He just wasn't done yet. And um, he's just one of those guys that is ascending, you know, for us. And um, it's, it's, really, it's really nice to see. He's such a great kid. He cares so much. He was working so hard at his craft, and he was struggling, you know, and it was wearing on him. And, and to see him starting to break through is, uh, is really, it's one of the gratifying things as a coach that you get to see a player break through that, you know, that wall. You know, he's just been banging at that wall, and you can see that it's coming down for him. Anything else? Good. Thanks, everybody.